All right, we're just starting off. Let's see how it's going. All right, the video looks good. The audio check seems to be working. Let me double check it. Yes, okay. So this is day two of unboxing my Alpha Lead birthday purchase sale. And I've had a long day. I actually had a really exciting job interview earlier today. It is a promotion within the organization I work in. So that's really exciting news in my personal life. Um, I'm a little, little tired today. And so I have the glasses on, but I may have to take them off because they're causing quite a bit of reflection. But for those listening, you should enjoy. I will go into lots of details. Uh, just to recap, this is a part two unboxing of the Alpha Leap birthday sale, which occurred um, over the weekend in February 2023. I find these are really helpful. I happen to be a person that wears the largest size that Alpha Leap manufactures currently and offers to the public. So hopefully my perspective is something new in case that might be a size that you're interested in purchasing. I did have uh, the opportunity today to go to the gym, do some weightlifting. I can tell you the movements I did and um, the clothing I wore. So I'm going to have some thoughts on top of the unboxing as far as functionality. So here we go. Let's get into it. The planet keeps spinning, but, you know, we're still human. So here we go. All right. So I want to start off by saying that I had with the algorithm of YouTube, a suggested video when I was working out today and it happened to be um, an alpha lead. I think something to do um, with the life, the business, all of that is from about two months ago. He was a guest on a podcast. Um, and so that got me thinking about some of the, the um, items, the business, the brand of alpha lead. I gotta be honest, I'm a consumer, I'm here for a product that works and functions and serves my needs. Um, but I guess it's okay to think about the business that you're purchasing from too. Sometimes I, I think we're hypercritical of small brands and really don't hold larger brands accountable and it's a competitive market. So I'll get into those kind of details towards the very end. Let's get into the fun unboxing first. So I ordered four, um, or I placed four different orders on the birthday sale. I spoke in the part one about my methodology and how I, you know, buy items on launches and how I go through it. Um, my first purchase that I did within seconds, completed that order like in under a minute, had to do with all the Amplify leggings. Then the second round, the second purchase, I focused on like my must have items, which was mostly leggings like the Alpha Lux and the other ones. Um, and then a third purchase was done in tops that I wanted to go that matched that second purchase. And then my final round, my fourth round were accessory items. So today I was hoping to get um, two of the orders uh, delivered, but I ended up just getting one. So, so far yesterday I received orders one and orders number three. Today I'm receiving order number four and tomorrow I got an update um, from the delivery service that my second order. So why is the second order actually coming last? Well, it was also the largest order. It had the most number of items that were large and heavy. And so that probably took more time to process. Uh, so that's something to think about. If you make a purchase on Alpha Leap for one of their launches and you just want to know like how the purchasing and processing and mailing system goes, this is hopefully giving you kind of an idea. I happen to live in a metropolitan area within the continental United States outside of the state of Texas, which I think is where the warehouse for Alpha Lee is. I'm not 100% sure. I could be closer to one of their distributors, um, look, uh, distributive, oh, gosh, distribution warehouses. Yeah, that, that sounded right. Okay, we'll go with that. So moving on. Um, I have the fourth and final order today, which was my smallest order. So I am excited to unbox it. So this is going to have a lot of the accessory items and all the little fun stuff that I picked out. So without further ado, let's get into the unboxing. 
Oh, the box is super heavy. I went ahead and already opened it up with the tape earlier. So now I have my items and I'm just going to hold it up so you can see this box was really full, like all the way to the top. One thing that um, none of these orders that I received um, had any kind of extra packaging inside of the box itself. There was no like styrofoam uh, peanuts or packaging materials, but that kind of makes sense because the items I ordered, none of them were breakable. They can handle, you know, the shipment. And uh, so without anything extra, this is the first set of items. So these are, I believe, resistance bands. And these were on sale for about, I think it was $3 a piece. And I ordered all three of the resistant bands. I do not have any resistance bands in my own personal home, but I've used them before, like in physical therapy. And I have resistance bands at the gym um, that I'm a member of. And I just thought it would be really cool to have like my own resistance bands at home. If I just wanted to do something and it was a rainy day, something was going on in my life and I just couldn't get to the gym. At least I'd have some resistant bands. It's one of the reasons I have um, kettlebells at my house. Cause I do like to always, do some kind of physical movement each and every day. Um, I don't go hardcore. I only weight train um, three days out of the week because I like my body to recover. I do cardio five days a week, but I like to have options. And I'm looking at maybe uh, changing out, changing up my program, doing something a little different. So these resistant brands I'm really excited about. I got them in the three different weights. So it comes in light, medium, and heavy. And the first one I'm opening is the light. Kind of kind of felt the lightest too, the bag did. So that makes sense. All right. And they do come in the black packaging, which you can recycle. Um, we discussed yesterday about the packaging for women's items were all white. The packaging for all men's items were all black. I can tell you right now, these resistance bands are not gendered they're just black and plain and I really like that and there's a detail on them that I was super excited about which is they're color coded so it's kind of idiot proof I don't have to like label these myself they come pre-labeled which uh resistance band is what so the lightest band is in the lightest color right here um at the handle it has a white rubberized indication and when I'm looking at it up close, yeah, it's definitely white. It almost looks like it's a different color. I'm not sure if that's my lighting in this, in, you know, where I'm filming or if that's the item itself. It's hard to know if someone used these and returned it or if it's just discoloration. It's, it's hard to know, but I'm really excited about this. It looks totally functional. Nothing wrong with the item itself. I cannot wait to work with it. So on to the next one. This is the heavy band and it is distinguished from light band by the color again on the handle strap. And its color is just a solid black. So that lets you know heavy light you know, light, dark, white, black, kind of is keeping in the alpha leap theme. And I can't say for the resistance, let's see how hard it is. Um, for me, that might be lifting, I don't know, a 10 pound, 15 pound weight. It, it, it still feels light to me because, you know, just what I'm used to, but maybe I don't have it stretched and pulled heavy enough. But that's why I do weight training. I like to lift heavy. I do uh, a certain kind of program. I can get into that on another day. That's not what we're here for. We're here for the unboxing. And this is our third item. And again, it is the Alpha Elite resistance band. And this time the logo is in a dark gray. And it does look... I don't know if these are discolored or they just have interesting, 
I'm going to have to check these out in different lighting because it's like my eyes are playing a trick on me. I can't tell if the lettering against the gray is orange or white. Honestly, difficult for me to know. But they're really cool. I really like the quality of the handles. They feel nice and large. Like I have really large hands for a woman. I actually have the same size hands as my um, my brother that lives closest to me. We wear the same shoe size. We have the same hand size. I am 5'9", and he's also 5'9", so that makes sense. Um, so I'm really excited about these. If you have smaller hands, the, the grips on these resistant bands might, I don't know, they might be uh, not comfortable. Uh, for me, this is really nice. Just to give a little comparison, I do have to have a different kind of grip on if you've ever done any kind of competitive shooting, you know, been to a gun range, when you have a handheld, you have to get your grip uh, sized for the gun. And I do have what would be typical in the range of a male shooter. So just to give a little perspective. All right, moving on, next item in the box. Oh my gosh. They're so typical. I did get some resistant glute bands. <laughs> Um, again, I wanted to get heavy, medium, light in three different colors just so I could tell them apart, but they didn't have any glute band on sale that was heavy. So am I saying that right? Yes. They, yes. They only had the light glute band and the medium glute band. So that's a little disappointing, but I don't know if I really want a heavy glute band. I don't know if I need it. I like to do side to side motions with the glute bands in kind of a sitting position, walking sideways. People call these all different kinds of things, but I had a personal trainer call them crab walks. So that's what we're going to go with the crab walk. Those definitely, I mean, work up a sweat. I don't even know if those are building muscle as much as they're just making me sweat and burn calories. But you know, that's important too, if you're <clears throat> looking to do that. So I really love the colors. I like how wide they are. They got a grip on the inside, the grip, um, the rubberized grip on the inside, there's two strips of it. Both bands had this and the, it looks pretty. I mean, I would expect this level of quality um, for glue bands and these do not disappoint. They're, I, I like how wide they are. I like this cottony feeling material. Um, and of course it has, again, the rubberized Alpha Elite logo. This logo, instead of being the block letters as were on the handles of the resistance bands, the logo on the glute bands are in cursive. And I'm assuming that's because these are more targeted towards women, but I just want to say glute bands are gender neutral. They can help everyone in the gym if you're looking to add them to your exercise routine. Those crab walks are killer. So anyone can do those, honestly. Whatever exercise or movement in your body makes it fun for you to be in the gym. You know, people talk about muscle confusion. I don't know. You know, it's nice to have a routine that you feel comfortable doing and then maybe mix in a couple things that are different. So here we go. Two more glute bands. I have never had a glute band break on me, but I have had them get caught in Velcro and kind of mess up and look frayed. And, you know, you just kind of want something new. And these glute bands, I think, were less than $5, maybe like 3 or $4. I can't remember. They were on ridiculous discount sale. And I was like, I got to get my hands on these. Speaking of which, more accessories. This was the accessory order. And I got two hats, identical. Why do I like hats? Well, um, you know, when you're in the gym, uh, back in the beginning of the COVID days, it seemed like everyone wore a hat inside the gym and just didn't want anyone to talk to them. They'd have the, the mask on, the hat on, and you were literally just like peeking out, just looking at people's eyes. It was definitely a look. I can tell the girlies in the gym that wear the hats, like don't talk to them. They're just in there to focus. They got their headphones on they don't want to be disturbed. I'm not like that. <laughs> uh, generally, I'm like a really outgoing people person. Um, but people don't talk to me much at the gym. So 
I guess they, I don't know if it's because they think I'm hopeless that I'm doing some kind of crazy exercise wrong or am I just doing it so right. The only time I've ever had anyone come over to try to comment on my the, a movement that I was doing with, um, I think I was, I had a barbell and I was doing squats and I was doing quad focused squats. And the person was like, that's not the right movement. Um, that's not how you're going to grow your glutes or something. And I was like, oh, well that's on purpose. I'm trying to focus on my quads in this movement. And it was so funny because at that moment, um, he was a really nice gentleman, by the way, he was, um, like, oh, you know, you know a little something. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I know a little something. Uh, but he was really helpful and really nice. So it was a great gym interaction. But since then, like, no one really comes over and comments on anything. So who knows? Anyway, the hats are all, so my first hat that I'm opening is all white. I don't know what the name of the color was. Did it have a name? Was it just white? It's called the PBNS, which is proud, I think it stands for proud, but never satisfied. I, I kind of, I really like that saying because there's some humbleness mixed into that. It's, you know, it's saying, um, you know, I'm, I'm in a place that I should be, you know, happy with myself, but there's still growth, um, that I can keep doing, uh, more than what I am. Uh, and I think that whole growth mindset in general is really something that I've lived my life by. Um, and I'm not saying people have to have it, you know, you might have moments in your life where you, you don't have to have growth, but over the course of a lifetime, you know, hopefully you're, you're a different human being emotionally, mentally, physically, you know, at age 80 than you were at age 20, you know, hopefully that you're a wiser, more mature person, that you're just a kinder person, a more worldly person. I feel like those are interesting and important goals. Obviously your physical health will decline, but it's not that health as a goal stops ever in your life. Health is always a goal. What are you doing to achieve um, quality of life, quantity of life, all of those things you got to think about. Um, the younger you start thinking about that, <laughs> the more it'll pay off in life. I had to learn that. I have not always been a health focused minded person. I've, you know, had academic pursuits. I've had other pursuits in my life, um, but not always physical. So, you know, learn from my mistakes, so to say. <laughs> I love this. Yeah, there's no color code though. No creativity, it's just white. Just white, it's just a white hat. It's got like one of those little paper things to help hold the shape. I got these hats so cheap. Again, these are like $7, I think, something like that. And on sale, of course, with the discount code. They have a hanger tag on them. It's the all black, same as the men's clothing. And I think the female clothing, but it's not as premium a feel. It's not as thick. Let me see if I can compare it to some of the other uh, tags. It feels... Yeah, it's not quite as as thick as the men's and women's clothing that had tag hangers on, but it's still really luxurious. I love the black on black. Uh, that logo is black, but in an embossed um, shiny print. So it does stand out when you look at it up close. Oh, it has a little disclaimer on it. I did not notice yesterday. Do not remove this tag or you can return it. Okay. Well, I'm not going to return it because I obviously can't. Um, but yeah, do you remember, does anyone else remember in like, was it the 90s that people would wear the hats and the tags would still be on them and just hanging? Do you think anyone in the gym would say anything to me if I just <laughs> went in with the white hat, with the big black hat, with the big uh, black tag on it still? Should I do that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, am I going to be that person? Who knows? I, I like controversial things, but I don't personally like causing controversy, if that makes any sense. I don't know if I want to upset anyone by doing that. Okay, it's got a lot of things on the inside of the hat going on. It's got a tag, it says Alpha Elite, and then there's a little tag that has the wash and care. Those things really annoy me on the inside of the hat, so I'll probably be cutting the part of the tag that hangs off. The inside logo, not a problem. The seams on the inside are really detailed. It's got dream more, you know, it's all, it's all that logo, be more, 
learn more. And it's in a contrasting colorway. It's in black. So the hat's well constructed. Everything I would expect in a hat. It's got a cool little detail on the back. The hardware for the adjusting um, for the adjustment in the back of the hat to make it tighter on your head, so to say, is I don't know if that's black or gunmetal, but it it is it is metal, and it looks really good. It's got a little protective sticker on it that lets me know no one wore this before me, right? So I can peel off the little sticker. There you go. And now I have it. Now I'm gonna have to adjust this hat super small because again, as mentioned yesterday, I have a pretty tiny head. Disproportionately small for my body is, is the way to say it. Which is not like my brothers. For some reason my brothers have normal size heads and here I am with my like little tiny baby head. Um, but of course, that's okay because this hat's adjustable. I do think it'll fit on me. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, I love wearing hats to the gym. I wanted to get it in white. That was the white one. And now I have the black one that I'm opening up just to see if it has any differences. Both of them are constructing really well. I don't even see a thread hanging. So that lets me know that there was some quality control on these. Um, and that may be just who they, uh, who Alphalete uses as their um, manufacturer for the hats. The hats are super nice quality. Like, I I get hats from pretty much every athletic brand. Uh, Adidas, Nike, Puma, uh, a lot of collegiate hats for my alma mater I have hats for. I like hats. I probably have, I don't know, 40 hats. So... I expect this level of quality in a hat, but of course the price was $7, so pretty exciting. And I just got basic white, basic black to go with a lot of my different outfits. The black looks like a wash, so it's kind of a faded black, which is nice. And of course the logo, like I said, the PBNS, the Proud but Never Satisfied, is stitched on. It is in a dark stitch, so it does kind of stand out and contrast with the faded black of the fabric. But it's not obnoxious or anything. It is really subtle, and I love that. I love a tone-on-tone -tone moment, especially in my hats, and I wanted to get gen like uh, neutral hat colors that I could just wear with any outfit. So white, black, I got my options. Sometimes I'm feeling dark, sometimes I'm feeling light. Let me peel off the sticker. Oh man, I love, I love peeling off stickers. So hopefully, hopefully you heard that. And the metal hardware, same as the white hat, on the black hat, it is all dark and it does appear to be complete black metal way. The adjusting strap works perfect, just like functional and then you just snap it closed. The inside of the hat, is exactly like the white hat. Okay, so they didn't do a different contrasting interior um, details for the different colorways. It looks like they use the same black dark tone um, details on the white hat that they used on the black hat. I guess that's some consistency. The white hat, it's kind of nice to see the contrast on the black hat, you know, it's just kind of looks basic. But I do like that they have the custom logo um, stitch detail it makes it comfortable to wear the hat and it does make it look more personalized when you go to put it on your head it's a secret that you know that you want to have you know this messaging maybe it means something to you so it's kind of nice it's like a little secret under there so the hats are super useful those will probably be the items that i wear the most from this haul All right, more items. Okay, so these items, I got a total of six little towels. These are little gym towels. These are 100%, everyone should have a gym towel. I see all the people in my gym like have a towel. It's not just for wiping your body, it's actually for laying on the equipment. Sometimes, you know, the gym equipment is not perfect. The vinyl will crack or whatever. So if you just want to save yourself and your skin, go ahead and lay a towel down, especially when you're working in the weight machines. I love working on the machines. I, I um, use that if I really want to go heavy and I want a very isolated movement. 
and I want to protect my joints, the machines are really great. I have not maxed out the machines yet, except in, I think, two of the machines, which of course were my lower body ones because... You know, my gym doesn't go up over a certain level, but they go really heavy. The machines are really useful. I think um, I was watching a Chris Bumstead video probably over a year ago. He uses machines because it protects his joints. If if Mr. Olympia can use the gene, the 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 machines at the gym, like there's no shame in it. I, I thought when I first started at the gym, like I wanted to be cool enough to do all the free weight movements. I wanted to do everything like without assistance. But what I've learned is, you know, that's just an ego thing. You don't have to do it that way. The Smith's machine is really awesome to work with. It helps you get to heavier weight without the stabilizing muscles that you have going along with it. I still do at least one day in the gym using just regular barbell movements using, you know, the big long barbell, I'll do different movements with that uh, setup uh, because I do want to work on my stabilizing uh, muscles. I want to get, I want to know what it feels like to have the weight on me. Um, but anyway, these towels, they're awesome. And my last gym towel just, just disappeared. I have no idea. I put it in my locker and I think I got it from like the Whitney Simmons collection from Jim Shark or something. It was a cute little towel. It was all white though. So like if you have any makeup, it shows dirt immediately. <laughs> Not very practical for the gym because the gym is kind of a dirty place. But yeah, so I needed a towel. My other one went missing. Uh, Alphalete, to my surprise, had two different sizes of the gym towels and two different colors. So I ordered one of each. And somehow I must have done the same mistake I did with the leggings because I've ended up with two of the white ones in both sizes. So, but that's okay because I think these were like a dollar, three dollars. I don't know. They were so cheap. I didn't even hesitate to add them to my cart because I would never be able, I would probably never buy them at full price um, without a coat or something. And they are exactly what I would expect. They got the, they're like a, very subtle camo print. They most, the black ones mostly look solid black. The stitching is really nice on the outside. It's got that really cool, uh, it's, so it's a towel, but it's incredibly thin. It reminds me of the same cleaning cloths that you would use for your glasses. So let me see. I bet this would make really good glass cleaning cloths. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, so if you don't even want a gym towel and you just want to get the small size for your glasses, like, whew, awesome. Honestly, I'm going to take one to work to keep at my desk because I do prefer to wear glasses when I'm working on the computer. You know, it reduces the blue light, all of that fatigue on your eyes. Wow. Okay, so it's got a little athlete hang tag on there. It's in the block lettering. It looks nice. Everything about the towel looks what I would expect. It's very thin. It's not thick. Like I said, it's the same. Imagine the, the fabric for cleaning your glasses, but it's a little thicker. It's like a hair thicker. It's like a premium glass cleaning cloth is what is how I would describe these towels. And you can tell it's printed because one side's a little darker than the other side. So probably one side has the main camo print on it. And that's where the PBNS logo is. It's so subtle. I don't think anyone will be able to see this at the gym unless, you know, they're right on top of you and they're touching it because it is a very subtle pattern. Uh, I think it just looks gray, gray, black, faded black. I love that. That was the small size. Oh, wow. Okay. So the small size is a lot bigger than I, <laughs> okay. I thought the small size was the big size. Huh. Sorry, I was about to make an inappropriate joke there. You know, you know what I was thinking. All right, so here's the large one, and it is really nice. It looks about the size of a like a placemat at a dinner at a dinner table. It's really large. Man, I can just imagine like having like a little gym picnic and get yourself like you and your boo, like a little, um, each of you have your own little towels and you can lay it out and have like your little, um, post gym meal or whatever. Wouldn't that be so cute? Yeah. These towels are great. 
good quality, everything I would expect. I like the camel print because it would probably, you know, hide stains or whatnot. So very practical item. It has a cool little loop. Both of them have like a little loop so you can hook them. I don't know what I'm going to hook mine on. Does the big one have the loop? Wait, I thought it did. Where's the loop? Okay, scratch that. The big one is a placemat. It definitely does not have a loop. The small one had like a little loop. Yeah, it's like a stitched little loop. And I assume it's to put like, I guess you could use a carabiner and like hook it on your bag, hook it on your water bottle. I don't know. Have it kind of out hanging out so you could like dry off your hands. Uh, some Sometimes your hands sweat at the gym and you need to get that grip. I'm assuming that's what the little loop is for is so that your towel is convenient while you're working out. It can be for whatever you want it to be. The white ones, I'm just going to open up uh, to see. This is the small size. I keep saying white. It is a, let's read the actual name. White camo. And it's the alkali towel, small, okay. White camo. I'm telling you, the names are not are not that creative, but I guess it doesn't have to be. Really nice. The stitching blends in. The uh, seam on the outside blends in, but the tags are still black, just like they were for the black camo. It's got a little loop. You can hang it on stuff. The branding and the actual camo print on the white one, very subtle, very subtle, but it's there. You know, it's there. I think it'll be a great glass cleaner. And again, I ordered two apparently of the white one. I don't mind because the white I actually like the best as far as the colorway. It appeals to me aesthetically. Um, even though the black's probably the most practical, I like the white one. Um, the white camo, which I keep saying white. It doesn't look white. It looks like a dove gray. It looks like... Mm, I'm trying to, to think um, what object. It kind of reminds me of when you go to Home Depot and they have the corrugated steel. It's kind of what it looks like, you know? I, honestly, it looks a lot like the corrugated steel. That would be a cool towel pattern. I would love, like, okay, and I'm not the only one. I love just going in Home Depot and, like, down the aisles and just, like, imagining the things I could make. That's probably the engineer in me. I had to do that for a senior design project. At one point we had to go to Home Depot and just, we had a budget, we had a plan, we had an objective and you had to like kind of budget for your project. Anyway, it's still fun to think about and do. Towels are great. Okay, so I got a total of six towels. Actually, I think that means my total number of items purchased is 69 instead of the 67. I might have to go in and edit that since I bought something I didn't even realize I, I bought. Ooh, okay, this is really exciting. So the next two bags I have are actually athletic wear. Okay, so this purchase was mostly accessories, but there were a couple items. When I went to check out the Amplify leggings, there were some colors that did not show up in the search. And then an hour or two hours later when I was making this purchase for the accessories, they were. So that was fun for me. I don't know what happened. I don't know if the computer glitched, but these were Amplify leggings in my size, which was double XL for seamless in new colorways. So of course I added them because I wanted to buy every single Amplify legging in my size that was on sale. I only bought the sale ones. And when I say on sale, I don't mean the ones that were 10% off. I bought the ones that were 50 or more percent off. I ended up paying less than 50% for these leggings. And I think on that podcast I was talking about earlier that Christian Kuzman was a guest on, he mentioned something about profit margin. And I think he was saying that their price point is something like two and a half times their operating cost, whatever, for these particular leggings. So I'm thinking like, man, I'm getting this at or below production cost. That's a steal. That goes back to what I was talking about earlier in the podcast um, in part one about 
why do brands have these big clearance sales? It is a clearance sale. I know, I know it's a birthday sale. It's kind of like a Black Friday sale, but this is actually like more of a clearance sale. Usually what happens in, um, you know, if you look at the business quarters, um, they have to look hard and see how much is it costing them to store inventory and how likely are they to sell it. And sometimes it costs more money to keep an item in inventory stocked than it is to just discount it and free up that space for new inventory to come in. So I was going to take advantage of that because I don't really care. No one at my gym. I mean, I'm like an older woman. I'm in my thirties. I don't have to have the latest or greatest. I'm okay with getting out of style colors, especially since this is my first time trying the band. I wanted to try all the different colors, see about this whole variation. All of these were launched at different times. I just wanted to see, I wanted to learn. And so I was happy to get these on sale. This color, I honestly was so excited about. It's called Mandarin. Is this Mandarin? Yes, just Mandarin, not Mandarin orange, just Mandarin. I would have liked it to say Mandarin orange because Mandarin actually can mean a ton of things. And I'm not 100% sure that I would have named anything Mandarin plain. I, I would have probably wanted to use the term Mandarin orange. Um, we won't get into that. I'm assuming the person who came up with the names of this has zero understanding of Asian, Asian or Asianic history. <laughs> I know a little too much because I've done some independent research and I did it uh, academically. Um, I don't, anyway, we won't, we won't mess with that until the end of the uh, podcast today, but the color is Mandarin. At least it's not just white or black, right? It's got like something different to it. The Amplify leggings look exactly like yesterday. The color looks really good. There's a slight marl to this, um, which if anyone doesn't know what the marl is, it just means when they're doing the weaving um, of the seamless um, on the machine that there is variation in the thread and it's not just dyed all one solid color. Most folks really love that marl because it hides imperfections and it also just looks better on the body. Some um, people like more, some people like less. I can tell you from the distance, even a very short distance, they look like a solid, solid color. You're not going to notice that thread variation unless you get right up on there. Looking at the logo in the back, it's the same as the other solid colored ones. Only the ombre Amplify leggings so far have had the stylized cursive Amplify logo on the back on the lower back where the logo is on the pants. It's the only location of the logo, by the way. This one in Mandarin is like all the other solid ones. It's in block letters and it's pretty small. I would say this is no more than three inches, maybe three and a half inches. Let me see. Yeah, um, across. So it's a pretty small logo and my t-shirt covers it. I, I don't think you could flip over the top of the Amplify legging. I've seen some girls do that on uh, online. And if you flip it over, you can't even see the logo. So if you're like anti-logos, this these pants are very friendly for that. Feels great, looks great. Just like the ones I opened up yesterday, very happy with that. I'm so glad I got that colorway because it's so pretty. And I got a shirt that I think is gonna match it. So the shirt is a women's collective open back SS crop, whatever that is. And it's in the color vanilla, 3XL. So this is the standard woman's clothing. You can get all the way up to 3XL. I think the 3XL fits the same as the 2XL seamless. But again, I'll get into that at the end of the podcast. Right now we're just opening things up and having fun. Okay. So this item has a hanger tag. It is folded super nice. It's got the cute little um, tissue paper. The tissue paper even has the Alpha Elite logo on it in silver. Very fancy. It's nice when brands do those little extras. It may not seem like much, but that costs money. And it costs money and time to even hire a person to think of those things. And I, as a consumer, a customer, appreciate those little touches. All right, so this tank, 
I thought it was going to be like cotton or something, but it's not. It feels like another uh, knit fabric, not seamless, not to be confused with seamless, but it is a stretchy four-way stretch. So in case you don't know, uh, like when you go to the fabric store, what four-way stretch means, that means it stretches in all four directions. If you've ever been to a fabric store or ordered fabric or done anything like that, there's actually literally an indication talking about the stretch and the directions of the stretch. So there's a vertical stretch, there's a horizontal stretch. They don't call it that. It's there's there's specific terminology, but I'm I'm pulling on the fabric vertically and there is a lot of give. I'm pulling on it horizontally and there is a lot of give. So this is what I would call a, a high stretch, high stretch fabric. I don't think this is going to be compressive at all. I think it's going to be super, you know, super light compression, which is like the Amplify leggings themselves are completely <laughs> low compression. I love the color. The vanilla is so pretty. It's, it's, it is a white, but it's got like a creamy yellow tinge to it. And I think that's going to look really great with the leggings. Like these colors were meant to be together, the Mandarin and this vanilla. So pretty. I love this crop because I think, I think on my body, because I have a short waist, the top of my leggings are going to meet the bottom of this shirt. And that's perfect for me because I'm not really trying to show any like tummy skin at the gym. Not that I'm ashamed of my tummy. I wear a bikini, like a string bikini in public. Like I love my body. I'm proud of the way it looks. It brought a human being into the world. <laughs> it helps me get from point A to point B. I'm happy to just have a body that moves. But you know, I'm not trying to make people stare at it. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it'll motivate people more. <laughs> All right. So I did get one other pair of Amplify leggings and the same kind of a top to go with it in different colorways. And then those are the next two items. So another pair of Amplify leggings. Again, I'm so excited that I got this color. It did not show up on the website when the sale first launched. I don't know if that was an error, a mistake, but it did not show up in my search. Um, ooh, okay. This definitely has tissue paper. It's a little different tissue paper. It doesn't have the silver logo. It's got the black logo. That's I think consistent with all the seamless lighting. The colorway is not gold. Why would you put a negative word, like the word not, when I say negative, like grammatically, it is a negative word. Why would you put that in the name of anything? There's got, maybe there's a story behind it and I just don't know, but I feel like that has a very negative connotation. I cannot imagine this color being popular because of the name. Like the name does not invoke a positive emotion from me. Um, it might not be gold, like the gold color. It might be a color that's not gold, but whatever other color it is, does have a name. So just saying what something isn't, isn't telling me what it is. Hate the name. That's like my big, biggest critique so far of all the Alpha Elite stuff, the naming of all these things. I really think they should work with um, maybe the kind of folks that do uh, naming of makeup products only because they're so good at what they do. I think that would be a good investment for the Alpha Elite business. I know they're still growing and expanding and learning and, you know, why not? But you wouldn't think that the names of colors are really important, but they will make or break it. Most purchases that are, you know, you're using your disposable income for it is an um, you want to make an emotional appeal to the consumer to want to buy something because these are not needs these are wants that we're fulfilling we want to wear something that makes us feel good look good and naming is so important ashley gata just did a review on youtube about the a, a brand i won't say the brand mostly because I can't remember the name of the brand, but it was a brand and she was trying on some seamless leggings. And the name of the legging color was Oxblood. They literally could have chosen any other name 
for red, but they chose the name Oxlade. And for her, that was such a turnoff. The word itself, she almost didn't complete the purchase because of the color that was chosen by the company. And why would you do that to a customer? It just doesn't make sense. And that is how I feel about whoever chose the word not gold. Terrible. Of all the names so far, I know I'm being hypercritical and it's not that important, but come on. If we're getting into the details, and that's what this podcast is getting into. We're getting into the nitty gritty details. Let's let's do some better. Let's do some better naming. But that's okay. You know, we're all growing and learning and maybe not gold was an inside joke. And like I said, I just don't get it. And maybe it does mean something for the people that were a part of the brand when this launched. Um, God, I love the color. It's a beautiful color. I was worried online that this was going to not look good. It um, looks better in person. Oh, it's got like some fuzzies. I didn't know if that was from my house, but that's actually some fuzzies from the thread on the fabric. I'm not seeing any mistakes on these leggings. They look perfect. The stitches look perfect. I've been really impressed with the quality of the Amplify leggings. That you can tell that is the number one item. Probably what they make most of their profit margin on are the Amplify leggings. But now that I've held them, um, I've even gotten to wear a pair to the gym. I totally understand. I get it now. I see why they're popular. Um, I can see why they're selling out. <laughs> uh, do they live up to the hype? I mean, honestly, they, they are exceeding my expectations that I had. Um, I got all of these leggings, by the way, for $30 or a little less than $30. So for me, they were super worth it. And then with that, the not gold, I got a really, the, the top is the same as the vanilla crop top. Again, the name of the crop top is, oops, Women's Collective Open Back SS Crop. This colorway is cloud gray. God, the nails. At least, at least cloud gray. I like kind of, like if it had been a launch with a theme of like sky or something like that, um, I don't mind weather related. Oh, it also had tissue paper. Look at me just dropping it. Oh, it's the silver tissue paper. Okay. So the cloud gray looks so nice. I definitely think getting the triple XL was the right choice. I have incredibly broad shoulders as a woman. And when I hold the t-shirt or four way stretch crop top shirt, whatever, um, up to my body, I can just tell that this was the right size because where the seam is hitting with the start of the sleeve, it's hitting me right at the apex of my shoulders, right at those little joints. And that is a good fit. So that means it's gonna be nice and wide on the back for my broad shoulders. Even when I was a size four and weighed 115 pounds um, and then like 120, I was 120 pounds for a large portion of my life. Um, I still had broad shoulders. So <laughs> I often had to buy much larger clothing. It just was loose on me. <laughs> that was the aesthetic. Um, okay, yes. The open back on this is so beautiful. I don't have a ton of really cute, um, sports bras, but I will just say that this shirt, this crop top would show off a lot of really cute sports bras because of how open it is in the back, but so pretty. And what great ventilation. I like the seam detail. The design of the pattern is really nice. I just noticed another detail. I didn't notice with the vanilla one. They both have it. The back has this open triangle and they took the fabric all the way down. They didn't cut it off and make a seam right here. They actually took the fabric, the cut, the cutting piece of the fabric design when they did the pattern for it all the way down. That is very flattering, but also it means that you have a double layer of the fabric. And this part of the body on the back shoulder of a woman often has on a plus size girl, a little bit of spillage over our bras. And this, this location, this pattern would do a great job of camouflaging that. So if a woman's self-conscious of that particular part of her body, which again, you shouldn't really be self-conscious 
conscious of any part of your body, but I, I understand I was a teenage girl. I was, I was in my twenties at one point. I understand why someone would feel self-conscious. Let me tell you this shirt, these crops would totally camouflage that. I wonder if they have more. I wonder if they've come out with these again, because this is a really good design. Super impressed with the design of these crop tops. Again, cloud gray, vanilla, and, um, the Amplify leggings that I wanted that to go with was the not gold. I kind of like that the not gold was a very warm color. The cloud gray is like a silvery color. I like that contrast. And they look really good next to each other. Okay, we're almost done. So I only have accessories left. And these are the two accessories, again, that I'll probably use the most, kind of like the hats. And they are the bags. Okay, so I almost bought, almost, almost bought the Alpha Elite duffel bag, but I still have uh, a Gymshark duffel bag for the gym and it's all black and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I've had it for two years and I think I bought it for like 30 bucks and it's, it's like the perfect size, not too big, not too small. It's got a nice wide handle shoulder strap. The Alpha Elite ones look just as good, but I just can't justify buying a second gym bag when I still have one that's perfectly functional. And the colorways of the bags weren't very exciting to me. Again, it was like black camo and white camo. And I already have a black bag and the white camo just, you know, wasn't very appealing to me. So I would have gotten a bag if it had come out in a cool color, maybe a neutral, maybe the Mandarin orange or the passive purple would have been like a really cool colorway. But yeah, I didn't get a bag because the colors were limited options and you know, they just didn't appeal to me. But they had these really cool, I call these soccer bags because every single person in my high school in the nineties, yes, I went to high school in the nineties, um, had one of these bags. And I think that's when they kind of first came out. I don't, I don't know if I remember seeing them before that. Um, but these little athletic bags that were just a really simple bag and then you would draw string them closed at the top and then you could wear it like a book bag, but they're just so simple. But I will tell you those ones that we had were simple. I think I had like a, I still remember it. It was a green Adidas super thin nylon with, and the Adidas logo was huge and it was like white. I remember the draw cords were black and they felt like shoelaces. And I remember putting like my shoes and like my gym, uh, you know, cause I played four sports. So I think like for volleyball, I'd stuff in like my knee pads and my shoes and you know, my shorts and shirt or tank top or whatever that I would need for that, that afternoon's, <laughs> you know, um, practice. But wow, there has been an upgrade. These are like super nice. Wow, these man, if if high school Carrie had had these, let me tell you, I would have been like the most popular girl. This fabric is luxurious. I paid like seven dollars or less for these bags, and I feel so guilty actually because they are they weren't that expensive to begin with. I think they were like twenty bucks or something. But man. They are nice. I can't believe I got these so cheap. I'm, I'm so glad that I purchased these because I love them. They're so fun to have. And instead of carrying the big gym bag, I can just throw in just the one pair of shoes, um, like my Metcons. I can just put them into this bag and it's like the perfect, perfect storage space. Oh my gosh. So this is bigger. This is a bigger pouch than like the Adidas one I'm remembering from high school, you know, a, a few, a few decades ago, <laughs> a couple decades ago. Wow. I really like the alpha lead on there. I kind of feel like it was a lost opportunity since this is all black. It would have been really cool to have the alpha lead logo. I like the size of it. I like that. I like the font, but it would have been cool if it had been reflective. Like that would have been like, Ooh, like that, like it would have been worth an extra dollar. They could have priced these at $25, $27. If it had that little reflective, that would have been super cool. Um, but the fabric itself, super, super thick. I'm trying to come up with words. It is a woven non-stretch fabric. So you, this has zero stretch. So, which is what you want in a bag, 
Unlike clothing, you do not want your bags to stretch because you want the items that are going in there not to press on the outside. Um, if you've ever bought trash bags, you know how they have the flex trash bags and all of that. You do not want that in, in your um, gym bags and stuff. That's, that's not a good thing. I don't know if this material would like snag or catch on things. I don't think the outside fabric would. Um, I'm kind of scratching it so you can hear it. Um, but the inside doesn't have that same. As I'm running my nails over the inside, it almost feels brushed and like I'm going to like snag um, a thread on it. So I like the outside of the fabric the most. I think it'll still be fine to just throw some shoes in, maybe throw in my glute bands, maybe um, those resistant brands if I want to take them to the gym. Obviously a water bottle, your keys. I don't know. What else do you need at the gym? A phone? I don't know. Sometimes I want to get away from my phone in the gym. But yeah, so the fabric's good. The size of the pouch is good. I have, you know, big feet. I think no matter your size shoe, your shoes will fit in this space. And the grommets at the bottom that hold the straps in, they do look like they are punched in. There's actually a grommet maker. And I have used that tool before. It is not easy hand putting in grommets. I've had to do it on a set of curtains and that was epic. Um, so I can appreciate uh, the quality of the grommets and they are tone on tone black and they're matte. So they are very subtle, which I like. That appeals to me. Oh, and okay. So the straps are kind of, I'm trying to look at the bottom of the straps because it is a tube material. Again, I told you that Adidas one I had in high school that bag had like what felt like shoelaces, which would like dig. If you had anything heavy in your bag, it would like dig into your shoulder. This, wow, this is like premium, like super cushiony, soft cording. And I'm just looking at the base of it. The cording reminds me of when you're at the fabric store um, and you're having to make piping. Um, if you've ever had to, you know, cover or make piping on furniture, or fabric, home decor. That's literally what this material is. I, I literally think that's what this is. I don't know, um, who their supplier is, but this looks like the cording that you find in home decor stores. It's black. It does feel foamy. So it's kind of squishy, but yeah, it kind of feels like a furniture manufacturer piping. Um, well, that's a really cool use of, of resource and it's a definitely different use. If I was going to be super nitpicky, and I am, I am, um, I would have done a different treatment for the bottom of the cord where it's tied off. I would have, uh, cause I can already see it's fraying and this is brand new out of the bag. So this is not a manufacturing error, not anything like that. Though this was obviously a design choice. They just cut off, um, the cording, which it's a non fraying um, material. That's what they call it. But there's a lot of things in the sewing notions aisle. They actually call it a notions aisle um, that are like that. And that doesn't mean that you still don't treat it. You never leave a raw edge on anything. If it's a final product going to a customer, in my opinion, I think they should do the same treatment that they do with the cords on their hoodies, where it has a shrink wrap rubber, um, grip, I think it would look so awesome on the bottom of these to do the same treatment. And that would actually be a pretty low cost solution. You would do it before you knot them and you would just do each end. It'd be cut, shrink, tie. So that is my suggestion for the most impeccable best bag on the market. I have not seen any draw cord bag like this. And I have been looking and thinking about purchasing one of these for at least six months. And I've been checking on like the Nike website, the Adidas website. I don't know if maybe it's a common thing and a lot of them are going to this cushion, but I haven't noticed it. And I've been wanting to get one of these. And you can cinch this, even though the cording is really cushy and plush, you can still cinch it super duper tight at the top. So you do not have to worry about things falling out of your bag once you seal it closed. I 
honestly, I guess I've talked enough. I don't know. Have I talked enough? This bag is amazing. Love it. I was thinking about giving away one of the bags as a gift and now I'm like, do I, I need to keep both. I had, I need to have like a white bag to, to go with my white hat and I need a black bag to go with my black hat. So when I go to the gym, maybe, maybe I'm going to up my fashion game at the gym. Cause honestly, I usually don't. And I have, I wear completely mix match everything. Last final item of this purchase. Again, this was my order number four for the birthday sale purchase is that same bag I just got into a lot of details on, but in the colorway white and the logo is different. This is going to have the global, the globe. I don't know. It has a globe on it and that's the print. I thought this was kind of a contrast to the black one. The black one has very small alpha Lee logo, very, very minimal, very minimal. And yet this one's got a nice big logo on it. And so the bag fabric, that kind of nylon, really thick premium fabric is in white. And then it looks like it has a screen printed or dyed. It's actually dyed into the fabric, this black logo on there. And that is super cool. It's not rubberized or anything. This, this, this if you're worried about it, I did not know from looking at the website, this is not printed on. This is actually dyed into the fabric. That is nice because you don't have to worry about the logo peeling off or anything like that. Wow. It looks better in person than on the website, hands down. The white is very white. It's very crisp. It's very short, sharp. Um, the same with the black bag, though. The white bag is not tone on tone. So the black one was like tone on tone on tone. The white bag isn't like that. It's got black contrasting it. I'm going to compare it to the hats. So the white hat had all that black on the interior contrasting with it, but the black didn't. So I'm assuming that was a purchase to save, um, or that was a design choice to save money. So they only ever had to buy the black grommets and they could just use the black grommets, whether the bag was white or black. So just to kind of keep it, it does look kind of nice to have it contrasting with the white. And I'm glad that they picked the black draw cords because I don't know if you know, but if you have this kind of material and you're putting your hands on it, you're going to stain this kind of like neoprene squishy uh, cording so fast with your hands. Like imagine if you have self tanner, like not even just makeup, but just like self tanner at all, that would like stain this cord so fast. So I'm glad they chose black. Of course, if you choose black cord, then you should have black grommets and it goes with the black logo. So I like this one. It's like black and white, mostly white. Same thing. It cinches up really nice. I love these bags. Like I said, so functional, you can throw in your gym shoes or water bottle, whatever you need. And the same thing as the black one, the bottom here with the tubing just doesn't have any treatment on this cord. And this cord, let me check the other one. This cord has a manufacturer defect is what I'm going to call it. Kind of similar to the manufacturing defects I noticed in the quality of the craftsmanship on that mercury red um, top that I reviewed yesterday unboxing. The fabric for the cord is on the outside, but the actual foam that goes on the inside tubing of the fabric is way down. So they're not at the same height. So that tells me that when this was being cut, someone was pulling and stretching it. Whatever. I don't know if it was a person cutting it or a machine cutting it, but there was too much tension. And so you'll have that mix match of the interior and the exterior. So that is something that I would have complained to the manufacturer about, whoever the supplier is for this bag. Um, they should have done a rerun or the machine may have needed some maintenance. Um, that happens. That happens. Life happens. Let me tell you, um, manufacturing mistakes happen even when you're making, can't, you know, drugs to treat cancer. Um, that's a fun story for another day. That was a great work experience. Have I gotten all the items? Oh, oh, I don't think I reviewed the mask. I did get a three pack of masks for the gym. I know, I know. We're not really wearing masks anymore, right? Because we're all vaccinated um, or we have, you know, people have caught COVID. So they're um, 
have a immunity buildup because of that. But I wanted to buy some masks because sometimes I don't feel like smiling. Ever since COVID, it's kind of like you get a hall pass to wear a mask and you just don't have to em emote that day. Maybe you're just not feeling like it when you go to the gym. You want to put on your black hat. You want to wear your black mask and you just want the eyes peeking out. You know what I mean? You don't want anyone to talk to you. I even wear glasses in the gym. So it's like hat, glasses, mask, you know, you can't see anything. Um, so I wanted to get a three pack of the masks. They were on super discount. I, they were like 80% off. I'm sure they look really good. I've gotten a couple gym masks. Okay. These have like that pocket for inserting a filter. I will not be doing that because I'm wearing mine more for social reasons, not for medical reasons. Um, but the mask does have like a really thin, comfortable wire. If you want to do that up around the nose, maybe you're like me and you just want to have a nice mask. I've been to a lot of anime cons in my life, like at least a decade of uh, anime, going to anime conventions, um, <laughs> you know, nerd camp, things like that. Um, and people just wear masks there. Like it was popular to wear masks at those events just way before the pandemic. So I kind of liked getting these because I like the all black color. They look very neutral. I don't think anyone will care about the writing on them. It kind of looks like very cool and stylized. And I could totally see myself wearing these at, you know, uh, a convention I'm going to in May. So I like wearing masks in public and it has nothing to do with the pandemic. <laughs> So I was really glad to get these on sale um, because some of my old gym ones are like so sweaty and gross and you can only wash them so many times. They do have the adjustable ear loops and they got, I mean, the quality construction of these is really nice. Let's see. I'm just trying on the mask. Yeah, it fits my face perfect. It's not too tight. I don't want it tight. I don't want any tension on my ears. I want it almost to feel loose. Super easy to breathe through. I don't have a filter or anything. It's just very, very thin cotton. I think you can hear me. I have the mask on and I'm talking into the mic. So you can tell me if you think it is a clear sound or not. So you'll be able to talk and project with this mask on. And it has nice little detail on the bottom. It really hides your chin. So if you're like me and have a double chin, it's like a chin lift. It's bonus. Yeah, I really like these masks. All right. Well, the masks are a 10 out of 10 <laughs> since I could try them on on camera. Highly recommend the masks. If you're someone in the medical field and you have to still wear masks. Oh, man, these are like hands down. These look super cool. And you can put the um, filter pad in if you want. So there are a lot of people that still have to wear masks for their job. And if you have to purchase your own mask for your job, I highly recommend these Alphalete ones. I got a three pack for like $3 or $4. So like the cheapest of the cheap. I kind of regret now not buying two of these. How come this wasn't a double order? How come this didn't get double ordered? That would have been way more useful. All right, I can see that my battery is about to die. Here it is flashing at me. Same as yesterday. Like no warning, doesn't give you any warning that that's gonna happen. It's like blink, 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 battery dead. And it is really unfortunate because I charged a battery, I got it out of the battery charger, and then I couldn't tell which of the camera batteries, the camcorder batteries, was, <laughs> was the one I had just charged. So that was pretty silly of me. I thought I had prepared, but not enough. So, uh, how long are we in? Okay, we we are just over an hour right now. I think we're hitting an hour, almost hour and 10 minutes. So um, I'm going to go to an hour and a half and I'm going to get into some details. These are the details about some of uh, like what I would say just as a consumer, like uh, consumer product 
um, feedback. I'm going to get into some of the comments that I've heard online against the brand and just my thoughts as a person in the world. Um, I do have experience. Uh, maybe that's atypical. There's not a lot of people that have both an engineering perspective and a legal perspective on things, especially, you know, I, um, uh, you know, with intellectual property issues, that was a focus of mine during uh, my time in law school. Those are the courses that I really emphasized and um, thought were fun. Um, so when we say intellectual property law, IP law, sometimes it's called, it is covering things like copyright, trademark. Um, I love trade secret. That was always my favorite. Don't tell anyone if you don't have to, AKA the Coke a cola formula. That's a trade secret. Yes, that has protections, legal protections for being a trade secret. So, and then the last one, of course, is patents. I know way more than the average person about patents because, you know, other than an actual patent attorney, <laughs> and uh, people might not know this, but there's more than one kind of patent that you can get. So we're going to get into all that. All right. So first off, like I've said already, the names the names of the product, I don't have an issue with. I feel like they are conveying something. Uh, I think a good example was with the Pulse collection. There were like two different kinds of pants. One was called something, the other was called Kinetic. Like those kind of names I thought made sense because it's invoking an emotion, a feeling of movement. And, you know, obviously if you're wearing an athletic legging, you want to move in it. So I like that. I like the name Kinetic. That is highly appealing to me. Obviously, I like Kinetic Energy because, you know, you're, you're not going to take a physics class as an engineer in college without learning about Kinetics. So that's a fun one. That one's highly appealing to me. Some of the other names like Amplify. I love Amplify. What an incredible name for a piece of clothing. Because guess what this does? It amplifies your mood. It amplifies your feeling when you put it on. It amplifies your confidence because what is it really doing? It's amplifying your glutes. It's amplifying your shape. And, you know, having confidence going into the gym so that you can do what you need to do, just stepping foot into the gym as someone who almost weighs 300 pounds, being the largest person in the gym when I walked in, it can be really discouraging. And I'm sure it feels that way if whether you're male, female, or, you know, non-gender, um, non-binary, um, it can feel awkward sometimes taking up space because a lot of people that are at the gym are there for health. They tend to be health conscious. Sometimes people with less maturity will judge and be negative towards people of larger size. I don't care where you are in life. You can never be too young. You can never be too old to learn something, to do something. And, you know, that's the whole growth mindset. Like I said, one of my inspirations for going into the gym, even though I was a very large person, I, um, one of the YouTubers that kind of made me decide to try weightlifting because I've tried a lot of different exercises. I've done Zumba, yoga, hot yoga, uh, Pilates. I've done boot camps. Uh, um, none of them were really appealing to me. I did weight training, weightlifting in high school and college, but for some reason in my head, I never put a connection that me, like this 30 year old woman, could do weightlifting randomly in a gym. But for some reason, I heard Will Tennyson say it, and then I was like, I could do it. And there was several female um, people that inspired me as well that I have come to learn about since, <laughs> you know, that video. But I'm just being honest and truthful. Who was it that whatever they said, whatever Will said, you know, hit me, made me want to change my life. You can tell he he is like a motivational speaker on top of being incredibly entertaining. I don't think there's been a Will Tennyson video that has come out that I haven't watched. I don't know if I'm a super fan. I'm definitely not a super fan. I would consider myself a casual fan, but I've seen all the episodes. I don't always watch them like as they come out sometimes, like maybe once a month, I'll just watch them all in a row. But 
the guy knows what he's doing and it's entertaining. I can see the evolution. I remember back when he first started. Um, but anyway, that was inspiring for me and getting into it, going to the gym is a big thing. So feeling confident, having the name of the pants be called Amplify, it is amplifying my attitude when I walked in. I wore the Amplify leggings today to the gym. So I guess I'll, I guess I'll show what they look like. I don't know if the camera is going to actually show my backside, um, but yeah, it, it goes on up there for sure. I noticed that other people were noticing me at the gym. I did not wear this shirt, by the way. This shirt is like way too casual. I would have gotten so hot, like trying to work out. I wore like a tank top, but I had such a good feeling being in the gym, doing my weightlifting today. So I love the name Amplify. So getting on to the colorways though, dark pine. I mean, it is a name, but it's not invoking emotion. Amplify is invoking an emotion. Dark pine. What am I pining away for something? Am I thinking of Christmas? Well, if you put them out during Christmas and you wanted to invoke like a scent of pine. Why use the word dark? In that sense, I think the word just pine by itself would have been nice. You didn't need to say dark pine. Because I looked on the list on Reddit of all the different colors that have come out. There's never been a light pink pine. So you didn't need to differentiate. So huh, some of the names I'm just not understanding. And I'm sure someone put a lot of time and thought into it. And it made sense in their head. I'm just giving you my personal opinion. And, you know, who am I? I'm not like a marketing um, genius or anything like that. I'm just someone who buys stuff and I've bought a lot of stuff, unfortunately. In my life. <laughs> uh, so I'm just giving you that opinion. I like, I like to have an emotional connection when I am purchasing things that are a luxury item that I don't need to survive. These are just wants and, you know, having, I guess now I own how many pairs of Amplify? I have, I have the lemonade, I have the two ombre, there's the purple pair, the gray pair, that dusty green, this pine, dark pine that I'm wearing. I got the two new ones, the not gold and the mandarin. So is that, is that nine? Almost 10. Well, now I'm mad I didn't get a 10th one. Well, I, I guess I got the doubles. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've gotten to try a whole bunch of the different amplifies. Um, I was testing some out yesterday, you know, just pulling them on. I chose to wear the green one to the gym today because it was the darkest color. I can totally see why the darkest colors are sold out in the larger sizes, the extra large and the extra, extra large. They're much less um, likely to show a shadow if you have any kind of cellulite. Um, because of this material being so unrestricted and like, a second. I mean, it feels like it's just right on your skin. Um, it feels beautiful to wear them. I would say they're very comfortable. I've been sitting this entire time doing this podcast, wearing um, the dark pine leggings, super comfortable. I wore uh, another pair of the amplifies uh, to the gym and they performed super well. I was, I was super happy. I did get kind of hot wearing them. I noticed I, I was sweating more than normal, but I don't know if that's from the leggings or from, you know, my pre-workout from Ghost. Uh, today's flavor was the sour green apple. I think it's the all out version. So it's got a lot of caffeine in it. I'm assuming that was causing me to sweat. Yeah. 400 milligrams, a whole lot right now, by the way, I've been drinking during the podcast, my creatine for the day. I am using again, the ghost. And this is the sour watermelon. It's so far my favorite um, creatine uh, flavor. I've tried a couple of the other ones. The mango is nice, but this so far the watermelon one's really good. Sorry, I can't talk about it without taking a sip. Okay. So the leggings did make me hot. So that was a bummer, but maybe that was because of the pre-workout. 
but I was extra sweaty today. And I don't usually sweat at the gym, but it could have just been the exercises I went through. So the exercises that I went to, I try to do a whole bunch of different ones. So I did, I'm trying to remember now. Okay. I did, I did your classic just, you know, with a free weight, with a free barbell, I did just some classic up and down squats, you know, lifting heavy, feeling myself. Um, I think that's when people were looking at me the most. And I only say that because I was literally working out in front of my gym's big giant mirror. So I can see what people are, you know, if people have their head turned toward my direction. I don't know if they were checking me out uh, or just impressed with the weight I was lifting. No, that's just my ego thinking that. Uh, <laughs> but it felt like I had more eyes on me than normal. I don't go to the gym for attention. So I don't know if I like that or didn't like that. Um, if you don't want attention at the gym, don't wear the amplify leggings. I don't know. I look at people's bodies when they move out, work out. Sometimes I look at them to learn their technique. I just try not to stare. No one like stared at me creepily. Um, so I did the squats. Oh, I did uh, uh, the press ups. So, you know, you just press the barbell up pretty simple did that motion um uh, i also did some is it good mornings i don't know it's like a modified good morning i like to do it so it like i really feel um the pressure on my low back and uh kind of like through the glute into the hamstring so it's a special kind of movement i do very slow controlled movements i like to have that mind muscle connection that they talk about and i like to have a very long um time under tension when I do my exercises. Um, why do I do it that way? I don't know, but it's working for me. It's working for me. I have not had any injuries and I seem to keep increasing and being able to develop my muscles so that I can lift heavier. So it's been working for me over the last two years. I did, you know, do weight training in high school and college. So I knew something, but I did look on YouTube to get obviously more modern advice. And I think it just depends on your body and what your goals are. Mine is to get strong. It's not to look a certain way. It's not to do a certain competition. It is to just be a strong person for what I need to do in my life. And so I really like building up my back and like my whole backside of my body in general. <laughs> so, um, the Amplify leggings really held up to all of that. Um, and then I went over and I did a couple dumbbell exercises and nothing, the dumbbells did not like, even though they brushed up against the pants, they didn't do anything. I did some lateral raises that worked out okay. Then I got onto one of the machines. I sat down on the machine. I wanted to see how that would work sitting on like a piece of equipment with the leggings on. And I was doing, you know, shoulder um, pulls. By the way, I do not recommend anyone do this workout routine at all. I was specifically doing it to try out the leggings. I would not recommend this chaos of a routine to anyone. <laughs> it was, I, I guess you could call it an all body workout. I'm going to call it a chaos. Then I did a couple of um, other movements before I left. I did um, some running on the um, treadmill. So that's how I like to end my workouts with a 15 to 30 minute, just depends on the day. Today I was pretty low energy. So I only did 15 minutes and I honestly felt super self-conscious. The Amplify leggings are awful if you plan on running. And I, I don't mean walking, I mean running. I felt every single movement of my body <laughs> It is hard to feel that. Um, so obviously I do have um, quite uh, a rear end, like my butt is large and not all of it's muscle. And of course, when you're running, you're not flexing your muscle anyway. So it's just gonna be loose. And just like, you know, in the front of your body, if you're a woman, you have uh, breasts and you wear a sports bra to hold them in place, to stop them from moving. My butt, it was like nothing was there to stop it. It, it, had, it had no support. It was just cheeks flying every which direction. I honestly have never felt self-conscious running or being in the gym in general, because I just don't care. Um, but I, I gotta be honest, I was a little concerned like, oh dang, my butt cheeks flying everywhere. <laughs> 
like, ah, who cares? So I kept running. I didn't want to like stop my gym routine, but you know, that could affect someone if they're still new to the gym or they don't quite, maybe they're a little self-conscious. I do not recommend the Amplify at all for running. I don't think that's what they're marketed for, but anyway, I tested it out and yeah, it's not for running. They felt comfortable running. I've like, they weren't necessarily a problem running. It was just like, <laughs> you could feel like a recoil with your butt, like as you were moving. So no, I, I don't recommend them for running. Okay. So thoughts on the brand. All right. So other things had to do with the hang tags. So apparently there's like this criticism out there for the brand with the eco-conscious. Okay. Well, if there's something that I'm an expert on, it is things to do with environmental impact. Um, that is actually my area of expertise in life. And I have the most um, like real world work experience, um, like a career in it. Um, so I can say a little something about this uh, as far as environmental impact. I just want to say the most large companies that put it out there, it is literally BS. They don't care. So if your criticism is, oh, well, there's not a mission statement on the Alpha Lee website or whatever about eco-conscious, like mm. most companies that try to do it, it's, it's just bluster. They're not really doing it and they're doing a bunch of things. I think John Oliver had a good point on this. If you want to watch something on YouTube, that's also entertaining. Uh, you can look up uh, the John Oliver episode that he did about uh, carbon neutrality and how it's just a joke because it is. <laughs> I think there's very few companies that do sustainability. Honestly, uh, just talking from a practical sense, um, having a sustainable world is a priority. Um, but it's not my priority. It, it, it's how can I say this? You know, if we can not be human, maybe we could live a sustainable kind of world. It's, it's hard because we want things. We want to consume things. It makes us happy. Um, and clothes do wear out these. I do not anticipate seamless leggings lasting me more than a year because eventually they're going to get snagged. There's going to be a run in them. They're not meant to last forever. Not all clothes are made to last forever. I do think that these can be recycled. That would be interesting if, you know, there would be a place where we can take them to recycle them and maybe be used to make another pair of leggings or who knows what. Um, maybe that's an option. Um, but waste management is actually not a bad thing. If people just disposed of waste products in a responsible manner, um, that's not a bad way of doing it. We, we have, I mean, there's a lot of uh, engineers that have solved how to manage waste. The problem isn't creating waste. The problem um, is sorting through the waste and it going to the right place. Um, not concerned about these particular items. Uh, I think they're fine. Um, but yeah, it would be nice. It would be nice to have like pants that are made from recyclable material, but just know every time that a plastic polymer is recycled, the chain that made the original polymer gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And so then the product, especially for something like a seamless where you're having to like pull those polymers into a material, into the thread, that is like super long, it is a better quality product, the longer. So the, like essentially the more virgin the raw product is, the better, softer, longer the threads you can make. Therefore the actual product itself will be more premium. And they see that's a competing thing. Um, if you know anything about material science, um, you know, this is a concern, um, but there's always breakthroughs in technology. Um, and so things can change. I like bio-based is always an option. Um, that is again, an area of expertise for me. I would love to see more bio-based products, but the truth is we just don't have the farmland. So then if you're using farmland that could be used to make, um, and feed people or feed livestock, and you're just using it to make leggings, then that's, a, then that's a criticism. What I'm trying to say is it doesn't really matter what you do as a brand or as a company, there's always something 
to be critical of. Um, I think the other criticism that I saw online that was floating around for Alpha Lee was about diversity. <clears throat> this is another area that I take really seriously. Um, I have uh, a child who is diver uh, diverse. A lot of my friends are, um, when I say diverse, I mean um, not white. And I have a lot of friends that are not white. And if you're not white, life is different for you when you're in the Western world, when you're in America specifically. And that is an important thing because representation honestly does matter. When you see someone that looks like you achieve something, it means something to you. I can tell you as an engineer, um, it meant something to me to see another woman in engineering. I still think we're like 10%. Um, I thought there'd be a big change in the two decades that I've been out of college. There hasn't like this, there aren't any more female engineer percentages wise. It's stayed pretty consistent. It's like we peaked at a certain level and just couldn't get past that. So representation matters in career fields. It matters in the gym. The gym I go to is probably about 50, 50, um, male, female, but it also matters, um, you know, not being all white. I like going to a gym that's not all white. <laughs> I like there to be people with different bodies. They, you know, we all look different under the lights when we're working out at the gym. I like that. That's just something that makes me happy. That's one of the reasons I chose to live in a metropolitan area with a lot of diversity. Um, I've lived in places in the world where I, you know, being a white person was in the minority. I've lived in counties where I was in the minority and I felt happy in those situations because um, you don't always have to be in the majority. One of the things I noticed on Alpha Elite's stuff is, you know, maybe some of this criticism, especially in the past, may have been true on the female side. It looks like they've done a pretty good job on the male side of things. Um, but yeah, I can see that criticism. Obviously, I'm also coming at it from like a size perspective. You know, if you're going to have people modeling your clothing, you should have both ends of the spectrum of your products. And for me, I don't want to see someone who's a size large. I want to see someone wearing extra, extra large. How do I see that spectrum? Show me the extra, extra small girls. That gives me some idea. You know, you could have people multiple, all the different sizes. Um, I would appreciate that. I know it's probably super hard to find folks to do that work because not a lot of people in my size are interested in it, probably. Or if we are, you know, double XL, you're probably not staying double XL for a long time. Like I said, I didn't purchase from Alpha Leap previously because I didn't think their clothing would fit me. Uh, since trying on the pants, honestly, I probably could have ordered an extra large. Um, they are very forgiving. I can see why people size down in the Amplify leggings, especially. They are incredibly stretchy, um, but I appreciate having uh, the double XL because I like uh, there to be a lot of extra fabric in the back. And so that way, when you squat down, there's less likely to shear out. So yeah, the pants were great. Um, I, I would have really been happier if um, there had at least been like one or two models on the website in the pictures of the product with like a true plus size woman. Um, that would be nice. I don't know. Obviously people are still buying them. So is it necessary? I think you can grow your market share. Uh, I think just like for the sale, like what were the leftovers? All the leftovers were in the largest sizes. Well, you know, you got to think there could have been people who would have bought it at full price if they had seen a picture of themselves. So that's just something that they need to think about uh, moving forward. I think they are. I noticed on the Instagram today for Alpha Lee, I was so happy to see this. As a member of the queer community, uh, I was super excited to see this. I saw, what was it that I suggested yesterday? The Amplify leggings. I, men should be wearing them because they're so great. And, you know, obviously a lot of men work out at the gym. They want to see their lower body gains just like the women do. I saw on the Instagram reel what appeared to be um, a man wearing tight um leggings. I believe they were seamless leggings. 
So I was incredibly thrilled with that. I don't know if he's on um, in the queer community. Uh, that could have been an assumption on my part. But he did appear to be someone who was super enthusiastically um, rocking those Amplify leggings of some kind. I don't know if they have a different name. I don't know if they were specifically made for men. It was difficult to tell on the reel. But man, if that's a new product coming out, I am like super thrilled about that. Super excited. Why not? Uh, like I said yesterday, it's hot. And we want to look hot, feel hot. You know, sometimes you just need that extra motivational, emotional boost when you go into the gym. All right. Uh, the other thing I noticed were all the different tags. So looking at the tags, yeah, okay. So some brands don't put tags on their clothes anymore because of the whole eco. That's kind of BS because tags can be recycled. You know, these can decompose. That's fine. I don't mind tags on clothing. I understand the purpose behind it. It's, it has to do with returning items. And I understand from just a quality control perspective, that's an important thing. So I can see like a, a value added. Again, Alpha Lee tags are super thick. They have like a little metal grommet. They look luxurious. They feel luxurious. They have like a touched feel to them. So I really think like if you're, I guess these are premium product leggings, like it's a nice tag. I will tell you, people complain about the prices of the Amplify legging. I think they're like 70 something dollars. I have purchased leggings by this brand. Um, I, I pronounce it lease. Um, this is not... This is a brand that's like carried out like Nordstrom's, whatever. It has um, also a, a very thick cardboard tag, but not as thick. And these pants all are over $120. Like you want to talk about premium brands? That's a premium price. Anything over $100 for some leggings. Um, but they have um, this like mesh interior. It helps cinch in your waist. And so it's like almost a hidden thing. It says it's patented. I can tell you it's not patented. If it was patented, it would have to have a patent number on it, period. Things that are patented. You can't just say, oh, patented technology. Patented how? I mean, there's only four patents out there. There's a plant patent, right? We got our regular utility patent. And we got um, um, a design patent, right? I don't think this is a plant patent, obviously. <laughs> Uh, by the way, a plant patent is something like you see a Honeycrisp apple. When you see the brand, or it's not a brand, it's, it's actually a product name, Honeycrisp, that apple, whoever was the original developer of that variety had to put in a plant patent. So that's fine. Um, utility patent is what we think of when we just think of a normal patent. So like, you know, new pliers, I don't know, um, your washer dryer part um, software. Um, those are patents. Games can be patented, like literally games, like, um, Monopoly. <laughs> you can, you can patent it. Remember patents only last for 20 years though. So what's the point in that? I really like design patents. Uh, so, uh, possibly maybe this is a design patent by the lease brand. Um, but those I think are only good for 10 years. I don't know. Some of that changes. So I, I haven't like stayed up on it. It's been uh, five years since I was in the know, so to say. Um, and the lot loss can change fast sometimes. Um, it could be longer than 10 years. But design patents are really fun. I encourage any brand to think about design patents. I think um, Alpha Leach should definitely consider having an intellectual property law firm on call. Don't, you can't just go to, a, I'm sure they have to have a, a law firm on retainer. Like every business should have a law firm on retainer. Usually you have a, like a business or a, a law firm that is business focused on retainer. If you are a business, you should. That's like just best practice. If you're not big enough to have in-house counsel, which I'm assuming Alpha Leach's not big enough to have in-house counsel, but maybe they are. I don't know. Um, but yes, they need to have on retainer a specific IP law firm. If they don't already, I'm assuming they do because he said he's had some copyright lawsuits. Um, but again, copyright technically, technically, you don't need anything special as an attorney. Any, any attorney could represent you in, in copyright case, but patent, you have to have a special license, um, above and beyond just your regular law license. So um, unless unless he's got that, I would I would recommend 
having an IP law firm represent him or have on retainer and specifically with um, patent law. By the way, Baylor Law School in Texas is excellent. I have gotten to work with some of those professors in the past. Awesome people, really fun. I, I think there are other law schools in Texas. Obviously, it's a massive state, but I can recommend Baylor. I'm sure there's some alumni that have an IP patent law firm. Um, I always think having uh, lawyers on retainer that are local is better than hiring someone from California or New York. Not that I, I know people love to <laughs> just hire them because, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why people feel the need to have like big city attorneys. I, I think it's better to have someone local personally. Um, but it all depends. Sometimes there can be one expert in the whole country on one area of law. And so you kind of have to have them and they may be in a big city like New York, but they don't have to be, especially now with everything being remote, they could be right there. Um, there is a patent um, court in Texas the Eastern District of Texas is actually known for being a really, a really well exercised patent um, um, co um, court. And, and I've, again, I've met one or two of the judges on that and they're very nice people. <laughs> it's kind of a notorious thing. So I won't get into the details too much because this isn't a podcast on patent law, but I might make one if, if people are interested. Um, but yeah, so the hanger tags, I don't have an issue with, it's no different than these other premium, um, brands. Basler is another brand. Again, these are like Nordstrom, um, level kind of, um, brands. I'm trying to think if they're in some of the other department stores, um, probably. Um, but I got them at Nordstrom. So I don't have a problem with hair tags. I don't think it's an eco problem. Personally, I did get excited yesterday that the beanie was made out of um, an alternative um, bio based plastic. That's exciting to me. Um, but obviously, uh, but it's not necessary. I, I'm, I'm happy if brands choose to do it if it's an option, but there are sometimes just limitations in the supply chain. And what can you do? Um, there's still a business. It's always good to have like, you know, maybe one more item, maybe two more items. I think Buff Bunny had a couple of uh, items that they included that are seamless, that are bio-based or something like that, recycled material. I noticed Nike and Adidas doing that, but they got the money for it. Um, I was kind of shocked to see Buff Bunny doing it. Um, so maybe Alpha Lead will do something like that. Maybe they'll do like an eco launch. That would be really cool. I'll tell you, Earth Days in April <laughs> happens to also be my birthday month. So what would I love for my birthday in like 2024? How about like an eco launch in April? That would be so cool, like an Earth Day launch. Um, pretty fun stuff. But anyway, I was really happy with this purchase, this order. So far, all the orders have been really good. This order had no mistakes. I didn't see any manufacturing um, like nothing was like a defect that was so crazy. So we are just going to go ahead and wrap this up. I went a little over. It's not quite as long as yesterday. It's three minutes shorter, but we're about at an one hour and three quarters. Okay. I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.